Hi everyone, my name is Troy Johnson. Uh, you can see up, me up there in the upper left hand corner. I'll be presenting along with Jonathan LaRue, who can be seen in the bottom right corner, and Timothy Kroll, not pictured. We will be presenting on the business sustainability practices of Tesla, Ford, and Kellogg's. So the agenda, first we'll go over a uh, preface for what the purpose of the presentation is. Next we'll go over what exactly is sustainability. After that, we'll each cover uh, the company that we selected. And for that company selected, we'll cover the history, environmental impacts, customer relations, innovations and creativity, social impacts, uh, systems approach, recommendations for each company. And finally, we'll close it off with a comparison of the companies. So to start, um, for this presentation, basically what we're going to be reviewing are the business sustainability practices of three companies that we chose, Tesla Motors, Ford Motor Company, and Kellogg's, um, along with a comp comparison between each of the companies and recommendations regarding the sustainability practices going forward into the future. So one may ask, what exactly is sustainability? Well, here's a quote that we think uh, defines sustainability pretty well. It's development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future, future generations to meet their own needs. So this involves a um, triple bottom line that we learned about in class. And those uh, triple bottom line, the triple, triple bottom line involves social sustainability, which are practices regarding how people are treated. Um, are they paid well? Is the labor uh, fair? Is the work environment safe? Environmental, environmental sustainability, the company's impact on the environment. Are they polluting or over -har harvesting rare minerals? Are they using a lot of non-renewable energy? And finally, financial sustainability. Is there economic value is created by the company or are they a drain on the economy? So Ford Motor Company was first founded in 1903 by Ford, uh, Henry Ford about 114 years ago, and he founded this uh, company Ford after his previous venture, the Detroit Automotive Company failed. In 1908, the infamous Model T was first, fold, first sold and went on to become one of the highest selling vehicles of all time, along with other vehicles such as the Toyota Corolla and VW Beetle. The integrated movie assembly line was developed in 1913 by Ford, and that was seen something that has revolutionized the manufacturing industry and is something that Ford uh, is definitely known for and uh, mentioned a lot for in history books for. In uh, 1914, Ford instituted a $5 a day salary that at the time was also revolutionary. That was a lot of money to people back then. And it was for an eight hour shift. And it was just seen as a, a huge benefit for people back then to be paid that much for only eight hour shift. In 1917, the Rouge River factory was built it was the first ore to assembly plant in the uh, automotive automobile industry. In 1917, Ford released their first, tr first truck, the Ford Model TT. And then in 1922, Ford acquired Lincoln, which is their luxury lineup of vehicles. Many don't know that Ford also had a hand in the aviation industry. They uh, developed something called the Tin Goose, which is an early commercial plane. Many people also don't know that they had a hand in military, military operations in uh, the world wars. They produced vehicles such as Eagle class patrol crafts, Jeeps, B-24 Liberator bombers. And a picture of the B-24s B being built at the Willow Run Assembly Plant can be seen in the bottom right corner. And in 1948, the F-Series line of, of trucks was introduced and in what would uh, become one of, or the best selling lineup of trucks of all time. In 1959, Ford Credit was founded, which is the financial arm services of Ford Credit to loan money to people in dealerships and uh, some other services. Uh, in the 1950s, Ford also helped design, build, and man the Mission Control Center that was used by NASA to help put the first men on the moon. And in 1964, uh, for first Ford Mustang was introduced, which is uh, another one of their flagship vehicles that's still around. Today, um, although much has changed with Ford over the years, Ford is still very much a thriving automobile company. They have increased selections of trucks, cars, um, new vehicles like crossovers and SUVs, 
the logo was even modernized in 2003 and you can see over on the right hand side um, Ford's logos over the years uh, but what hasn't changed is uh, Ford's unwavering commitment to sustainability regardless of uh, their history of success and innovations they've always had a commitment to sustainability and making the world a better place. So the environment impacts with Ford Motor Company. Ford's constantly researching new and innovative ways to make their vehicles more friendly. Some are pretty interesting. For example, the first one is uh, they research the potential to use agave plant for production of bioplastics. Agave plant is a byproduct from Jose Cuervo building their uh, developing, or I shouldn't say developing, but uh, creating their tequila. And Ford found a way to use this agave plant to make bioplastics. Um, EcoBoost engine, that's something that's also really big at Ford. Uh, it's an engine with a combination of turbocharging and direct fuel injection that uh, improves the fuel economy without sacrificing power. Um, something uh, pretty recent, the F-150 steel frame was replaced with aluminum, which improved fuel efficiency, uh, saved up to 700 pounds per vehicle. Thus, there's less emissions that are given off by the vehicle, so there's less weight and improved gas mileage. EcoRoot software was uh, built for the navigation systems to help people use less gas while driving so they can find the most effective route to get somewhere the fastest and with less amount of gas, once again, resulting in less emissions from their vehicle as they're driving less. Um, in 2016, the Rouge River plant went landfill free, which is a huge accomplishment. This keeps about 14 million pounds of waste out of landfills every year. They also have the Living Roof, which um, consists of a 10 acre, 10.4 acre roof that's covered in uh, seed and plants, and it reduces the heating and the cooling costs for the building. It cleans water and air and provides a natural habitat for many of the animals that actually live up there in that environment. So every year Ford Motor Company produces a sustainability report and some highlights from the 2015-2016 sustainability report include a 25% reduction in the amount of energy that Ford's manufacturing factories use, an A- rating in the CDP index for efforts in water conversation, conservation. Uh, they recycled enough aluminum every year to produce 30,000 F-150 bodies and uh, global waste sent to landfills was reduced by 40 percent as compared to 2011. Additionally many of the factories use closed group recycling where items that are um, recycled by Ford are then turned back around and used within the factories for example steel or aluminum that's used for the vehicles. Um, they're normally sent for recycling. They'll turn around and smelt that back down and use it in their vehicles again. Uh, ups upcycling is also done uh, where plastic containers that consumers might use for laundry detergent or other things are, are recycled and turned into parts and other uh, things that can be used in vehicles. So additionally, Ford also founded uh, Ford Smart Mobility LLC recently. Um, this LLC performs research on mobility, technology, and some strategies that can help people get from A to B faster and at the same time also reducing the amount of greenhouse emissions that companies or vehicles are uh, releasing. Not only vehicles, but they're trying to get people to use uh, alternative forms of transportation such as ride hailing or even bikes, which have much less emissions. Um, and of course, they're also researching autonomous vehicles, which provide the potential for reduced gas house emissions. And it also helps reduce congestion in areas where pollution and congestion are major issues. You know, when there's congestion, you sit in traffic longer and hence more emissions. So they're researching all these different ways to basically help you spend less time in the road and which results in less emissions and it's better for the environment. They also have a huge commitment to vehicle electrification. They've recently announced 13 new electrified vehicles in the next five years, including electrified SUVs and trucks, which is significant because these vehicles are traditional gas guzzlers. 
So in terms of customer relations, Ford addresses the latent needs of customers through continuous research to figure out what exactly the customer wants. Innovation to build better and safer products. Uh, they try and predict what the customer wants before the customer knows what they want. And they provide a large variety of vehicles to try and um, appease or appeal to a wide variety of customers. They have marketing through all forms of media, social media, TV, radio, magazine, anything that you could think of Ford probably advertises through it. Uh, they also have an in-house company futurist, her name's Cheryl Connolly. She does a lot of research into what exactly uh, consumer trends are hot right now and kind of the direction towards where consumers are going and just technology in general. You know, uh, trends such as sh share economy and car sharing, virtual reality, millennials and consumer trust. Um, you know, do millennials trust the products and the companies that they're using? If they don't, they're a lot less likely to use that uh, product that that company makes. Additionally, Ford tries to produce uh, green vehicles, as I mentioned earlier. This especially appeals to the millennial generation who has been shown to really care about uh, the vehicles that they drive and other products they use are, aren't too bad for the environment and it, they want to feel like they're having an impact on uh, helping to save the environment and same thing with ethical consumption. A lot of millennials want to make sure that uh, their products are ethically sourced and developed. Um, Ford also builds a lot of safety and security in their products to try and draw customers in features such as blind spot detection which detects and lets you know if there's something in your blind spot hill launch assist uh, which helps you uh, go up a hill uh, when you're coming out of park driving and ford my key which is a keyless key to help you get into your vehicle uh, quicker um, the vehicles are also equipped with latest technology such as sync 3 which is an infotainment sounder you can see an image on the right it's equipped in uh, pretty much other vehicles, and uh, it's a piece of technology that a lot of people know about. It exists within Ford's uh, vehicle modem, so vehicles can connect to uh, the internet, download updates, or people can even have Wi-Fi connectivity within their Ford vehicles now. So, again, as I mentioned earlier, Ford. Uh, helped create the first moving assembly line in 1913, which was uh, especially innovative and creative at the time. It's been constantly refined and improved over the years, but they were the first ones to come up with the idea and implement it. And it was a huge boost to manufacturing at the time. Again, the $5 wage, which I mentioned earlier too, was especially uh, creative and innovative at the time to help keep employees at Ford keep them motivated to working for working and their employees felt valued and felt like they were treated well and did good work. Additionally, in 1932, Ford produced uh, the first uh, mass-produced flat had V8 engine that was cast in one piece. Uh, this was especially in Bay at the time as engineers said this was something that was impossible just a couple of years prior, but Henry Ford sat with his engineers, engineers and said that he wanted it done and eventually his engineers were able to produce it. So today innovation is a significant part of Ford's culture. Uh, you hear the term from Mark Fields, the CEO, a lot saying drive innovation to every part of the business. In 2016, 1,500 patents were collected, which was the most in the automotive industry. Um, and uh, just a few years ago, they were the first automotive company to replace their pickup truck, the steel frame with aluminum. This was really innovative at the time, especially risky with that being their flagship product, F-150, but it worked out well, reducing the weight by 700 pounds, improving the gas mileage, and it didn't hurt their sales. They also have a large portfolio of electrification patents, and they've researched um, a lot of uh, creative and innovative technologies to use in their vehicles, such as soy foams, which could reduce emissions by over 20 million pounds per year. They use these soy foams in their seats. Plant oil applications, various applications they can use plant oils for within the vehicles. Uh, plant oils would be a lot more environmentally friendly, and they'd use locally sourced plant oils. Um, another thing that was recent was the on, something called On The Go H2O, which was developed by a Ford Motor uh, Company employee, actually, who um, thought it'd be cool to collect the condensation from 
the vehicle while it's running and run it through a filtration system and into a cup that sits in the vehicle and you can see a picture of that on the slide here on the right. So in terms of technology at Ford Motor Company, they recently created Ford Smart Mobility LLC to try and help uh, create technologies a lot faster for uh, the industry that Ford's in, uh, the automotive industry, and not only the automotive industry, but also new and emerging industries such as ride sharing and ride hailing. Um, that Ford also announced their intention to have a level four autonomous vehicle by 2021, which is an autonomous vehicle that doesn't have gas pedals or steering wheel and can drive in a 3D mapped environment, which requires uh, enormous technology commitment to be able to develop a product such as that. Ford's also had a lot of recent technology investments in companies such as Chariot, which is the ride hailing company from uh, San Francisco, California, Argo AI, which is an artificial intelligence and robotics company, and Pivotal Labs, which Ford is especially leaning on to help uh, bolster their software development techniques and technologies they're using to try and develop uh, software a lot, uh, a lot faster and uh, with a lot less errors. There's also the Sync3 technology, which users use within uh, the Ford Motor Vehicles to connect their phones to their uh, vehicle, performs all kind of, perform all kinds of operations with it. Uh, Ford also recently announced the Data Center of the Future, which is a $200 million project to build an enormous data center that's going to capture and store uh, all the data from the connected vehicles that are coming out, and especially into the future where even more data is going to start to be captured. So that's an enormous technology project. Finally, uh, Ford is also expanding the Silicon Valley to try and uh, immerse a lot more employees in that innovation culture that exists at Silicon Valley and all the cool uh, technology projects that are going on there. So in terms of social impacts, volunteering is a significant part of Ford's culture. They even have a 30 under 30 program. It's led by Bill Ford where 30 people under, three, under the age of 30 are selected to spend a year volunteering in area communities to make the world a better place. Um, the Ford Volunteer Corps has completed almost 11,000 projects since 2006 and contributed over 1.2 million hours of volunteer time. Ford's committed to working with the UAW to ensure that factory workers are treated fairly, compensated fairly, and they have a sense of job safety. And Ford has a comprehensive water conservation strategy and are part of the CEO water mandate to help ensure that uh, they're constantly trying to conserve the amount of water that they use uh, throughout their factories and with their vehicles. Additionally, mercury has been eliminated from all vehicles at Ford and are developing strategies for vehicles with uh, mercury-based components to help make sure that this doesn't leak into the environment. Um, the sourcing of rare earth elements, they're working to reduce the incorporation of these rare earth metals in electric vehicles so they can be used for other things and are available. And uh, current battery systems have saved up to 250 tons of rare metals each year compared to the previous products. Additionally, Ford provides tools to ensure that drivers not only drive safe vehicles but utilize their products safely. They have speed limiters and speed alerts so parents can keep an eye on their children while they're driving make sure they're driving safely. There's hands uh, for e-calling with sync to help make sure that phone, uh, users can talk on their phone safely while driving. In terms of Ford's supply chain to make sure that they source a lot of their stuff um, ethically and their um, suppliers are doing so, uh, they try and uh, aim to ensure that their suppliers comply with laws and treat their employees well. They work with their suppliers to reduce carbon imprint, footprint and they're also working on efforts to ensure that 100% of their Inscope suppliers provide reports on the transparency of their mineral sourcing. And finally, they're working with their suppliers to may help them achieve sustainability. So with the systems approach for Ford Motor Company, uh, one Ford is an archetype that defines the ideal behaviors that Ford Motor Company would like their employees to exhibit and model themselves after. Um, there exists balancing loops between business creativity, innovations pillar, and sales, and the technological pillar in sales because as more vehicles are sold, 
money's funneled back into these pillars to try and make the vehicles better and draw more customers to them. Um, there's also exist feedback loops between the social impacts pillar, the customer relations pillar, and also the ecological pillar, and the customer relations pillar, as those each have um, an effect on how customers view their company and whether or not they'd want to buy a car. So recommendations for Ford Motor Company. I would uh, recommend that they extend the strategy utilized at the Rouge factory to all, all their other factories to try and improve their sustainability and drive down the costs um, of operating those factories, put a greater effort into increased gas mileage of the vehicles, keep making smart investments in technology for future growth, and finally maintain the innovation mindset and keep um, driving innovation into all the different parts of the business to help make not only the business better, their vehicles better, and just um, improve, improve people's lives overall. All right, my name is Jonathan LaRue. I'm going to be presenting on Kellogg Company, or Kellogg's as most people know about it today, in our sustainability report. I chose to do Kellogg's because this is a company that I am working for right now as an intern in the real estate and global facilities department dealing with all of our buildings not only in the US but across the world. And there you go, there's a picture of me at the Kellogg employee starters days that they do with new employees, you know, giving a little bit of history about the company, what goes into the company, different organizations in the company come out, give us nice little presentations what to expect and just gives us a layout of what Kellogg is all about. I'm also the graduate assistant golf coach at Lawrence Technological University for the men's and women's teams and will be graduating in May of 18 with my master's in business and a certification in project management. Here's a little history about the company. Kellogg's was started by a man named Will Keith, or W.K. Kellogg, in 1906, and as the years went on, they expanded into different cereals and more cereals to appease to new customers. The first thing that he created was the Kellogg cornflake, and this was very different from the normal use of different cereal companies in the U.S., because he used corn-based in their flake instead of wheat. Now, there were 42 other cereal companies in Battle Creek when he started the company, and to help consumers distinguish his cornflakes, he would put his signature on each package, saying that these are the original. As you can see on the right, that is his signature on a original box of Kellogg's cornflakes. Kellogg's isn't just all about cereal and breakfast foods. They do a lot with all the different snacks, cookies, crackers that they have in their lines, which include Pringles, Cheez-It, Keebler, and Pop-Tarts. And in 2001, they acquired Keebler, the cookie company. And along with that, Cheez-It came. In 2012, they officially welcomed Pringles, and this helped propel Kellogg's into the number two spot for savory snacks around the world. This is big because it shows that they're not only focused on the morning foods, but also snacks and cookies. Here's a good map of different acquisitions that Kellogg has purchased over the last 20 years. You can see two healthy snacks in the beginning of 2000 with Morningstar Farms and Kashi. This appeases different consumers that they're used to because it gives them a healthier option. There you go, you got Keebler, Pringles, and then some different foods around, you know, the Europe, Africa, Russia, South America, China, that help them become bigger in those parts of the world. When it comes to environmental impact, Kellogg's is aimed at trying to make a smaller carbon footprint in the world by the year 2020. In a good article after they came out with their sustainability report a couple years ago, this manufacturer shows that they want to expand the use of low carbon energy, reduce water use, and eliminate waste. 
alongside a committed a commitment towards more responsible sourcing of the company's top 10 ingredients and materials. This is a major key in what they are trying to accomplish because it shows that they are not only focused on what they are doing, but they want their vendors and consumers and who they are buying their products from to also be sustainable towards the world. And a good example of that is one of the Ego bakeries in San Jose, California, recently installed fuel cell technology that produces approximately half of the facility's annual electric consumption, as well as using less water to generate this power than if it had been supplied by the utility grid. This is huge because this definitely shows that they are working towards eliminating their carbon footprint. When it comes to human resource and customer relations, Kellogg is a very well-known brand image and people around the world could tell you exactly what they are. With a lot of acquisitions happening so quickly over the last 20 years, they've had to keep up with a lot of growth and demand, which leads to a lot of, lot of HR complications and questions. To be more efficient, they wanted to standardize their processes and policies so they could support growth. She also says they had a tremendous need for nimble systems that could move f- as fast as the business. So based on the fact that the business wanted reliable data, and we weren't confident we couldn't, we weren't confident we could supply it. We were able to make the business case. This allowed for them to show that they needed a bigger HR system that could accommodate such a rapid growth and keep up with the demand of the people. Innovation. Everyone is always trying to be better than their competition, and by doing that, they need good innovation and new products to sell. One big thing that they need to keep up with is how people are trying to be healthier in the world. So by doing that, they've come up with, you know, Special K, who's such a huge, the biggest portion of Kellogg. You got Kashi and Bare Naked now. These are two companies that really appease to the health side of consumers. As you can see from this quote from a senior, a former senior vice president of marketing innovation, he once said, so we're building off these brands with new products that reflect our deep understanding of people's evolving taste preferences and nutritional needs. Mainly this, this is a great quote in 2012 showing that they want to become more healthier and keep the consumers coming back because they know that they're getting a good food product that not only is tasty, but helps them become more nutritional. The implications of information technology and information systems at Kellogg. This is huge because in the beginning of this year, 2017, news came out that Kellogg was shutting down 39 buildings. What comes of this is how big information systems and information technology are being in play now. In order to make sure that all these buildings are correctly shut down, people are where they need to be, how they expand, how they improve, and how they move on, the IT and IS need to be at top quality. It shows that they want to be able to grow in their 2020 plan not only in certain aspects of the company but they're doing so with major implications on what the company is working towards accomplishing they want to be out of their direct store delivery network in the second quarter of this year they want to move out of DSD, move to retailers warehouses and shows that they're trying to save money create growth thanks to implications of the IT in the company. By saying this, they are trying to improve how they work and how the social impacts at Kellogg. First, let me finish off on the IT implications. They really need to focus on making sure they're using information technology to incorporate these changes that they're trying to make in 2017. When it comes to social implications, Kellogg is a major contributor to people who do not have a lot. As a food company, Kellogg devotes much of its efforts to supporting programs that nourish families so they flourish and thrive. 
one of the biggest initiatives that they've come up with to help people in the world is by making sure that everyone has a better breakfast. They plan to reach a billion people, three million people, I take that back. Oh no, one billion servings of cereal and snacks, more than half of which are breakfast to children and families in need around the world by the end of 2016. This shows that they're huge in trying to support people that don't have a lot. When it comes to the systems approach of Kellogg, within the five pillars, Kellogg is really focused on the sustainability of the earth and the company. The big thing that comes into play is definitely the brand image is going to keep improving with how they are caring about the company and earth and also the people of the world by giving back to people free breakfast. This allows for them to show that they are really focused on the world and the consumer and that opens the eyes of consumers and wants them to buy these products. Their main goal, and I believe this will achieve no matter what. I think they need to stay focused and they will do that. My recommendations for the Kellogg Company. They need to stay on the path that they are on. They need to keep building snacks and also moving cereal back to the prime it used to be. I think by 2020, cereal will be a little less off because a lot of people are so caught up on moving, 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 getting to work, and they don't really have time to sit down and eat breakfast. So I think they can keep improving the health and sustainability of the products. This will allow for them to keep a better understanding as to what is going on, and this will keep, tra keep them on track for their 2020 plan and target. Here are my references, and thank you very much for listening to my portion of the sustainability report on the Kellogg Company. I chose to do my presentation on Tesla out of an urge to really get more into this company and what it stands for in its technology and what it's offering uh, consumers and vehicles. Uh, working for Ford Motor Company myself, I've seen us begin to delve into the electric vehicle space. Uh, with our new investment of 4.5 billion, but it was interesting to look into Tesla as they have been operating as an electronic vehicle maker since 2003 and currently have three vehicles on the market which are available to consumers for purchase. Uh, and with the direction of their CEO, they have really branched out to become more of an energy and automobile company through the use of their batteries. Uh, and essentially the, the electric vehicle has been used as a a proof of concept uh, for the battery technology that uh, Elon Musk and Tesla has developed. A little bit about me, there's a photo. Um, I'm currently employed at Ford Motor Company where I work as a business analyst uh, on several internal applications generally with uh, if you have a Ford vehicle that has sync I probably have a hand in some portion of that functionality uh, throughout my career. I've been there since March of 2010 when I started as a uh, college graduate candidate, which means I had a three-year essential residency where I went through positions. Uh, I finished that up in 2013, and since then I've been working into the business analyst role uh, in various re applications. Um, this is my second degree I'm going for. I previously finished my Master's in Information Systems from Walsh College in 2015, uh, and then I decided to go back to get my MBA uh, from Lawrence Tech, where I received my undergrad degree uh, in Information Technology. Uh, sometime in 2013. S to provide a bit of a background on the history of Tesla, I laid out this timeline just of kind of the key points in the history uh, of the company. Uh, in the upper left, you'll see from July 2003, Tesla Motors was officially founded by Martin Eberhard and Mark Tarpening. Uh, those two individuals came up with the idea, uh, idea of this company after seeing a vehicle by a company called AC Propulsion, which was a two-seater car powered by batteries uh, that turned the perception of what electric car was on their heads. And from that point forward, they chose that they were going to start a new company to develop an electric sports car, something that hasn't been tried up to that time. Uh, prior to their launch, the only thing that had been released with a fully electric powertrain was the GM Evo 1, which was a uh, two-door uh, vehicle powered by lead-acid batteries with a 100-mile range uh, that was largely unexciting to the average consumer, although the people who did have them were very fervent about how great they were before GM repossessed them all and subsequently had them crushed, uh, which is believed to be due to the large cost per vehicle to consumer. 
off that idea, they partnered with uh, Lotus Engineering and used an existing body style and then altered uh, the understructure and components to put a, an all-electric drivetrain and a battery pack. And in 2006, they revealed the Tesla Roadster, which was their two-seater vehicle capable of uh, going 230 miles around, 230 miles uh, range on a, a single electric charge uh, with zero to 60 time below four seconds. Uh, it had pretty large fanfare on its launch and sold very well throughout its life. Uh, until it was discontinued in 2012. Um, in October 2008, Elon Musk was appointed the CEO. He took over in place of Eberhard and Tarpening when they stepped down from the company, largely due to internal conflicts and just the need for better direction on where the company's end, end point was for products. Um, Elon Musk was already the CEO of SpaceX at the time, so him stepping in was somewhat controversial, but as he was the largest investor in the company, it did make sense, and his guidance has been crucial to the company going forward. In June 2008, they introduced the Model S, which was essentially the four-seater follow-up to their, their Roadster. So the Roadster uh, sales money was essentially used to fund the Model S's development and engineering cost for it to be released to the public, uh, and that vehicle has also been very popular. In June 2010, Tesla went public on the NASDAQ, Looking now at their stock price, you'll see they're the highest rated automotive company by share price um, with a market cap higher than even that of GM and Ford. And that's something that's not based on current sales, but rather based on the promise of the company going forward. In February 2012, they revealed the Model X, which was the next, uh, next vehicle in their line or their first SUV, uh, which shared the powertrain of the Model S, but had some new features such as falcoing doors in the rear that opened uh, sensing if there was a vehicle next to it, so it allowed people to get in and out of tight spaces from a rear seat, so it was largely innovative. Uh, in April 2014, Musk announced the creation of Tesla Energy, which put out two consumer products, which is the Power Wall and the Power Pack, which were essentially marketed to people who had solar power in their homes for storing power overnight when the sun is not out, so you could use solar power all throughout the day as opposed to relying to the grid for power at night. In March 2016, Tesla launched the Model 3, which was the much-awaited uh, consumer-level uh, vehicle with a starting price uh, supposedly at $35,000 uh, with $7,500 rebates applied to the price. Uh, this vehicle hasn't launched yet, but it has somewhere over 400,000 pre-orders at this time. And the final important item is in November 2016, they acquired Solar City. That was another company which was launched by Elon Musk, which specialized in uh, solar power solutions for homes and businesses and this is important when you look down the line for Tesla strategies. In the past events, so Tesla was the first company to offer a sports car with 200 miles of range or an electronic sports car with 200 miles plus of range, something that hadn't been done before and something that made consumers pay attention to it. Uh, they had a very specific product strategy where essentially the Roadster funded the Model S, the Model S funded the Model X, and the Model X all together with some further investments funded the Model 3. Essentially every single vehicle which they've planned has been designed to further their product development strategy for what they can offer consumers while not having to generate a large amount of debt or investment. And they've developed a nationwide supercharger station which is essentially a, uh, a charging point which can charge your vehicle in one hour as opposed to the standard overnight charge it takes. So it eases the range of anxiety for someone who's going on a trip longer than 240 miles but it also allows long road trips. Uh, some consumers have traveled from California to New York without ever having to stop for a long charge, only using supercharger stations. From an environmental perspective, Tesla Motors uh, is viewed as a champion. So they're representative of clean energy through not only that the fact that their vehicles are zero emissions, but also the sense that nothing in the process of driving the car has any negative effect on the environment. But that is not necessarily true when you look at the underlying causes under the con section, which is the cars utilize natural resources. So they use lithium ion batteries. Lithium is mined um, in most cases. It's mined uh, on the surface using harmful chemicals, which are then put back into the earth, essentially making that soil unusable. And they are also strip mined uh, in some countries, leaving large pits open when the when the mining is operation is complete and there's no more lithium to be gained. 
the manufacturing plants also are not 100% operated by solar or another option at this time. It's just not possible with the throughput that they're doing, uh, be it their plant in California, which currently produces the Model S, or their Giga, pan or their Giga plant, which is launching in Nevada, which is bolstered by solar power, but will still be on the grid for some level of energy. Um, also, the final point, while the car itself is zero emission, it's pretty pretty known to consumers that when you're charging it at your home you're not having no impact on the environment the car the power coming to your home is generally going to be generated through natural gas or coal when it comes to customer relations tesla's fairly unique early in the direction of the company they made the decision they didn't want to have a a, a dealer network uh, which is why you still have trouble getting some of the vehicles because they can't directly sell to consumers in all states due to existing franchise laws but by not doing the dealer network, they do not have to have affiliates in each state and instead can choose to open galleries where people can view their products. But by and large, most people order their Tesla via the internet and it's delivered to their home. There's very little face-to-face -face required for purchasing the vehicle because there's no incentives or discounts or anything applied. So the process of ordering is very simple. Tesla has a very strong social media presence as well. This can be seen with their CEO putting announcements out on Twitter, but also it just is also their customer relations strategy with uh, recalls and various communications is all handled uh, via the internet for their transactions and their service centers are also with a similar way. When they have recalls, they'll send people out to your house to pick up your car for the repair, give you a loaner, and then when completed, they'll return your car to your house. So their customer relations are strong that way. Uh, in the beginning, when Musk took over, they were using a different package, but he saw, coming from software with PayPal, the inefficiencies that it had, so he created a custom CRM solution in-house, which has led to uh, better customer sourcing, and they're actually scaling this up now for the 400,000 plus people which are going to be uh, purchasing Model 3s when they launch, or when they're, they're built for those consumers. And the final point is just how Tesla's viewed. Um, Tesla is very very favorably viewed by the average person who if you talk to some their goal is to own such one car even though they're hundred thousand plus at this point but with the model 3 you see how fast they gained 400,000 orders it was in roughly one period of one week they had that many people who wanted to jump on because they they view the company so well when it comes to innovation uh, it's really Tesla is an innovative company. They're the first company where all their vehicles are fully electric. They don't have a single internal combustion engine vehicle in their line. Uh, they were the first per company to have an autonomous vehicle, which is something you'll hear a lot about. Their vehicle operates at SAA3, which means it's capable of driving hands-free but requires human interaction to operate the vehicle. Um, this is with the autopilot technology they have, which uses sensors and cameras to essentially take over the driving operations for staying in lane, backing up. But essentially, a Tesla can be driven hands-free by the operator. Uh, through the introduction of the superchargers and quick chargers at home, they've gotten rid of range anxiety, and in fact, the range on their vehicles is only getting better. Uh, most models now get over 300 miles on a single charge, so for the function of to and from work, most people have no problem getting by with an electric vehicle. They're also the first fully electric uh, driver experience, when you look at a Tesla's console, it's pretty much a 17-inch LCD, which has every single function in, that the vehicle has put in your fingertips. Uh, so there's really no physical controls for HVAC or radio or anything else. And while some automakers have done it, uh, they've seen a lot more complaints uh, than Tesla has in their implementations. Uh, going into Tesla's non-automotive functions, they've introduced the solar roof, which is essentially solar panels that look like standard roof panels for people's homes. Well, pricing is not yet uh, available. A lot of people have shown interest in picking this item up for the fact that they can look at putting a solar implementation on their home without having the standard panel look in place. And then that factors into the next one for business home battery power storage where uh, you can't go off the grid if you don't have power stored. So with Tesla's solution to store power, they've really innovated in the fact that you can decouple yourself from the grid. Um, with regards to Tesla's information technology and information systems and its implications on its business, uh, Tesla's vehicles are basically software that's rolling, so anything on a Tesla can be updated 
um, over the air by the manufacturer with a single software push. In the past, they've done things by uh, such as fixing recalls by this and also changing zero to 60 times uh, in an overnight software push. Um, Tesla's also been wise to use its Silicon Valley background to have a custom CRM system which improves its service to end-to-end -end users. And as I stated previously, their software can in, uh, really help with managing customers' issues uh, on the fly. Uh, with regards to social impacts, Tesla is a, a disruptor or a change agent in the automotive sector primarily. Uh, it has shown the viability of electric vehicles at a time when uh, large manufacturers weren't, were not rolling them out. Even now, when gasoline is cheaper, Tesla is still a successful company. People are still being driven to their vehicles. Uh, just to think that in the future gas will not be 250 a gallon, but instead may go to four or five a gallon. So it shows that it's a viable technology and consumers are interested. To that note, Elon Musk didn't keep all the patents for te Tesla's drive technology secret. Instead, he's open sourced them so anyone can download them and use them in their vehicles free of licensing. So you don't have to pay Tesla to use that. They're, well, they don't know how many are used by other automakers. It is certain that some other people are using such technology. Um, and Tesla's first vehicle changed the idea of what an electric car is. It wasn't slow, it wasn't underpowered, and it wasn't able to drive for 75 miles and then have to be charged. It was something you could use all day, and in fact was fun to drive. And Tesla has done the ultimate thing of branding, is it's made the electric car cool, and it's made it a luxury item that people aspire to own. Um, going forward with their prop with the uh, purchase of Solar City. Um, you can see Tesla applying its brand and marketing image as well to try and get people to adopt solar in greater numbers with the solar roof and the home battery storage options as well. Throughout its history, Tesla has continued to strive to be a complete solutions provider for those seeking to eliminate their negative impact on Earth. Essentially, Tesla right now as a company is able to offer consumers a solution for their home, which will take them off the grid and energy that's polluting. We'll switch them to solar so that can be stored overnight as well to power their home even when the sun is not out to charge their vehicle which will drive on the road without using any type of gasoline or having a negative impact on the environment. Tesla is using its brand Prestige to give exposure to such technologies as solar and power storage that they wouldn't otherwise have received but they're also using what they developed internally for batteries and for uh, power storage to be applied to these. So the automotive company is now informing the other aspects of the company for what technologies it can release to the public. Tesla also, as an automotive company, has experienced quality issues and is now controlling its quality through managing its supply chain effectively and if possible in states where they can't sell. They are now acquiring businesses so they can actually have a presence in that state and properly sell to consumers. As for recommendations for Tesla, the company is on a good trajectory. Elon Musk has positioned them well to compete and actually lead in the automotive sector when it comes to the electric segment. They need to work to continue to eliminate the barriers of entry to products. By that, I mean the high price. Uh, looking at the Model S, the average price is over $100,000, which is out of reach to the average consumer. Uh, with the launch of the Model 3, which will launch at $35,000, minus any type of options, really, uh, you'll probably have cars that are upwards above $50,000, which is still above the average purchase price of a new vehicle for consumers. So they need to continue to get their technology up there and their production process up there to lower the cost of entry to where they can get cars in the $20,000 to $30,000 segment very effectively that are not bare-bones versions of their vehicles. Uh, Tesla also should continue to, uh, to promote their complete home energy solutions with solar roof power wall and for the large-scale business uh, solutions as well, as that's a large growth potential for them as people start to look to alternative energy solutions. Um, and the final thing is, as Tesla launches the Model 3 and has 400,000 pre-orders, they've never produced that many vehicles. So they must work hard to maintain their quality to keep their brand prestige high and the rating high in the eyes of consumers. Uh, so they're not eroding their brand by scaling themselves larger that much quickly. When it came time to compare Ford, Kellogg's, and Tesla, there came some striking similarities between two companies which obviously come together in the segment which they compete, that's Ford and Tesla, as they're both automotive companies, 
And then Kellogg's also on the outside, you begin to see that there are some similarities in the business sustainability uh, when compared with Ford and Tesla. Uh, from the environmental side, with Ford and Tesla, you can see already that there's a strive towards clean manufacturing, uh, meaning <coughs> taking brownfield sites or other plants, converting them to clean use, such as the Ford Rouge plant, which uh, anyone who went on the tour knows has the green roof, uh, recycles all the materials, essentially it's a zero landfill plant. But you could also look at Kellogg's environmental imprint and see the same type of information. Uh, in the in in the presentation, it was talked about how they have some plants that are now running on completely renewable energy, uh, and that is the strive for the environmental portion of the companies. They are all seeking to be better corporate citizens of the environment, be it through cleaner manufacturing for Ford and Kellogg's, or be it through clean vehicles uh, with Tesla and Ford. Uh, when it came to the customer relations pillar, each, co uh, each company has sought to really interact with customers through all uh, aspects of the purchase from uh, their research to procurement to post-purchase satisfaction uh, that can be seen with Ford and Tesla in their social media presence for consumers as well as their customer engagement hotlines but you can also see it with Kellogg's where they're always reaching out to consumers to notify them of their new products and reach out and find the new segments which are underserved such as the uh, health uh, the health snack segment with their special K branded line uh, with innovation and technology uh, Ford, Kellogg, and Tesla are all leveraging technology to better their products and services to consumers. Uh, <clears throat> this could be something as simple as with Tesla utilizing the electric vehicle platform in a way it's never been done before, or Ford leveraging that same type of technology in their future. But with Kellogg, Tesla, and Ford, there's also all the software systems which go into their production systems uh, to ensure that items are met and quality is kept up for consumers. Um, going into the social impact place, or as I just summarized it, strive to make the world a better place, um, Ford and Kellogg have a little bit of a leg up in terms of the social impact in the sense that each of those companies have a pillar of volunteerism and also uh, large amounts of charity work. Uh, Ford with their volunteer corps where employees can volunteer out in the world. Kellogg's with their direct donations to Feeding the Hungry and other organizations uh, in an effort to you know, curb problems such as hunger in the world. Uh, with Tesla, you're really dealing with a social impact of a changing mindset about a, a vehicle space being electric vehicles and making them a viable option for consumers. So that's some of the comparisons we could draw between the companies.